From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ed Renser, Johnny, Union States Casualty Company. Oh, hi, Ed. I heard you were trying to reach me. Yes, indeed. A plane leaves in two hours. For where? Ensenada. It's a port on the west coast of Mexico, south... Yeah, of... I know, Ed. I know. I've been there. Well, but what you... Charlie Burton is down there, Johnny. You know, the big nightclub TV comic. You know, good old lovable boyish Charlie? I've seen his show. Who hasn't? Really keeps you screaming, doesn't he? Oh, he is a killer. Eesh. So what do I do? Go out there and scream it up for you him? You go out there and keep him alive. Someone's threatened to murder him. One of his audience, maybe? <laughs> no, wait, Johnny. This is no laughing matter. Anything happens to Charlie Burton, I cut my throat. Hey, you really do like his show. We're carrying a half million dollars worth of insurance on that boy. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Union States Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the laughing matter. Item one, $221.50. Transportation by scheduled airline to San Diego, incidentals there, and charter plane for a flight 80 miles south into Mexico to Ensenada. Item two, a dollar ninety. Taxi from the plowed ground airstrip to the Carrara marble foyer of the Plush Balboa Beach Hotel. The contrast was typical. Ensenada is two towns, really. The tourist town is a glittering belt of pseudo swank resorts around the south end of the bay. Bald headed men in flowery sport shirts and fat women in shorts, loaded down with cameras, souvenirs, and U.S. dollars. The loafing town. And next to it, the rows of warehouses and docks, the fishing fleets and freezer plants, narrow dirt streets and slums. Soft-eyed Mexicans and the gentle, liquid sound of Spanish. Native town, the working town. Two different ways of life, and no bridge of understanding between. The executive producer of the Charlie Burton Show, a man named Frank Maltz, was in my room five minutes after I checked in. Glad to know you, Mr. Dollar. He was probably in his middle 40s, but looked older, haggard, pressured. A little battered around the edges. He might not have his ulcer yet, but he was sure working on one. Didn't waste much time getting here. Well, that phone call of yours got them pretty upset back there in Hartford. I meant for it, So too. I get it. Have you called in the local authorities, Mr. Maltz? No. Why not? No, it wouldn't have done any good. Charlie would have blown his top and had him thrown out. Good old lovable Charlie? Yes. He doesn't know you phoned Hartford. No, he'd have stopped me if he'd known. Why? Does he want to die? Oh, he says he's had murder threats before, crank letters. He wouldn't take it serious. But you do, is that it? I didn't figure. It was up to me to decide. As I understand it, Mr. Maltz, there was a note of some kind slipped under Burton's door. That's right. Well, tell me about it, will you? All right, yesterday evening, after we came back from shooting some scenes around the bay, we went to our room, shower, clean up for dinner. Uh -huh. you know? When Charlie started to leave his room, he saw the note. Where is his room? Fourth one down on the terrace to the left. All our rooms open onto this same terrace. Do you still have that note? No, no. Charlie tore it up after he read it. Did he show it to anybody? Yes, to me. It was on stationery from the hotel here. It was in pencil and crudely printed. Remember the wording? Oh, yes. It said, only the gods are immortal, Burton. As you'll soon find out, you'll never leave Ensenada alive. Hmm. Kind of an odd way of putting it. Uh, I thought so myself. Know anyone who might use that style of phrasing? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. All right. What else, Mr. Maltz? Nothing else. Those are the facts. Anything happened since the note? Not as far as I know. Burton could be right, of course. The whole thing may be a hoax. Yeah, maybe. But that's for you to decide, not me. Who do you know who might think they had a reason to kill him? Ah, uh -huh. I think I'll let you form your own conclusions on that. Oh, thanks, Mr. Maltz. That's very thoughtful of you. All me. right, I'm sorry. I realize I haven't given you much to go on. Practically I nothing. I can't help it, Dollar. That's all I know about it. I see. Well, talk to the others. See what they know what about it. others? Well, I was thinking mainly of Gloria Dale and Al Schreiber. And there's Charlie himself, of course. Suppose you brief me on those other two. All right. Gloria Dale's the feminine lead. Oh, yeah, I've seen her on TV. Yeah, probably. She's been with the show for three years. She's in her late 20s. She's single. She's gorgeous. 
She has a terrific sense of comedy. How does she get along with old, lovable Charlie? Good question. Maybe she can give you an answer to it. All right, I'll ask her. And who was that other one you mentioned? Al Schreiber? Yeah, he's a young newcomer. He's been with the show six months now. A real talent, if he were ever given a chance to show it. Why isn't he given a chance? Uh, because on the Charlie Burton show, my friend, there is one and only one star, namely... Good old, lovable boy, Charlie Burton. Oh, you've been reading the press release. Well, as a matter of fact, I have. All right, who else? No, that's all. At least all that matter. The camera crew, the technicians who were sent up from Churubusco in Mexico City, they never heard of Charlie Burton before. And we haven't had much of any contact with anyone here in town. Now, I think that note was written by somebody right here in the family. That's another reason I sent for you instead of the local police. Just why did you send for me, Mr. Maltz? What do you mean? How do you feel about Charlie Burton? Haven't you guessed? More or less, I think. Well, I'll spell it right out for you, Mr. Dollar. I hate his guts. And what do you care whether he's murdered or not? Care? I'd get roaring drunk to celebrate it. And yet you're the one who phoned an SOS to Hartford. Well, sure. If Burton does get it, I want an expert around. Somebody will tag the right party for the crime. A matter of justice, is that it? Why not? Oh, because it's usually just a word people talk about. What they really want is to win. Ah. Is that what you want, Mr. Maltz? <laughs> Very funny. You ought to go on television. No, I'm waiting till they perfect it. I feel the same way about murder. So the legend of lovable Charlie was starting to crack. One person at least didn't love him, Frank Maltz, his executive producer. And there was something else besides hate in Frank Maltz's eyes, a weariness or bitterness, something I couldn't quite place. I filed the thought for the moment, took time to shower and change, and went looking for another pair of eyes, a prettier pair. And I found them, alone on the terrace with their owner. They were turned toward the west, toward the last golden edge of the sun as it sank into the Pacific. They were big and blue, and very lovely. Hello there. How are you, Miss Dale? Miss... I'm Johnny Dollar. I just got in from Hartford, and I've been talking with Frank Maltz. Oh, you must be with the advertising sponsor. No, I'm an insurance investigator. Huh? Yes, I'm here in regard to that threatening note that Mr. Burton received. Oh, that. You've heard about it, then? Oh, we all heard about it. Interminably. <laughs> from Burton, you mean? Who else? Oh, he paced and posed and beat his breast. He wept and stormed and shouted at us. Harangued, accused, and monologued us. <laughs> Our base ingratitude after all he'd done for us. Done to us, he should have said. That one of us, a viper in his bosom, should stoop to such a practical joke on good old luck. If it was a practical joke, what are you doing down here? You think it was a joke, Miss Dale? I don't, but Charlie himself said... Do you mean somebody really meant that threat? Maybe. Well, what do you know? Any ideas to who might have written it? Sure. Anybody who knows him. Is he that bad, actually? Mr. Dollar, you've heard the expression, horrid old man. Yeah. Well, if Charlie Burton worked for years to improve himself, I mean, really tried, eventually he might lift himself up high enough to be a horrid old man. <laughs> well, if it's like that, why do you stick around? Why do I? Because I signed a contract last year during an emotional crisis. And it's got two more years to run. Break it. Breathe a little clean air for a change. I'd be dead professionally, and that's about all I've got in life now. Professional career, such as it is. Same thing apply to Frank Maltz? Yep, contract. Executive producer is just a title. The Charlie Burton Show is owned by Charlie Burton, locked, stock, barrel, and the souls of the employees. Something of a dictator, huh? Egomaniac. He's a pre-adolescent paranoid with the ethics of a rattlesnake and the jealous instincts of a Turkish harem master. Uh -huh. oh, forgive me, Mr. Dollar. I had that line in a play once, but it still fits him. Tell me the truth, Miss Dale. Did you write that note? I'm a female comic, Mr. Dollar. So? So who can write? Gloria. Out here, Al, on the terrace. Al Schreiber, have you met him yet? No, but I've got him on the list. That may turn out to be quite a list before you're through. Downstairs bar at seven, honey. That's what you said. Downstairs bar at seven. Yeah, I know. I'm going in and change right now. Al, this is Johnny Dollar, Al Schreiber. Hello, Al. How are you? Glad to see you. Mr. Dollar's an insurance investigator. He's here about that murder threat Charlie got. You mean that note was for real? Could be. Well, happy days. Maybe there's hope for us yet. Careful, Al. Mr. Dollar's making a list. Sweetie, I'd be proud to confess. Only I didn't think of the idea, and besides, I'm a coward. Did either of you actually see that note? No, but we heard about it. So I understand how does insurance figure in this? 
You mean some company actually wrote a policy on that earthworm? To the tune of a half million bucks. Holy Hannah, who's he worth that much to? His sponsor, the advertising client. I doubt if it's personal, really. They're just protecting their investment in the show. A half million fish. For a phony old fake who weighs in at a fast 30 cents. Say, maybe they're out to kill him and make a profit for themselves. <laughs> yeah, I'll put them on the list. And I take it you're in the club, too, Al. Club? At least you're not wearing a love Charlie Burton button. Oh, sir. All I am, ever was, or hope to be in any future life. All I have, ever had, or expect to have at any time, notwithstanding. The foregoing to supersede any previous statement, and irregardless of any utterance made hereafter, I owe in its entirety, and without any reservation whatsoever, to my one and only benefactor, that sterling, magnanimous, warm-hearted, genial... I'll bet you think I'm only saying that because it's in my contract. <laughs> Did you write the note, Al? I don't know what to say until I check with my writers. Yeah, I have the same problem with my underwriters. Say, that's not bad, Mr. Dollar. You know, you ought to Sorry. try television. I'm waiting till they perfect it. <laughs> Item three, 80 cents, one drink. I had it sent from the bar and sat on the terrace alone and drank it. I watched the sun die in the west and let the soft night creep out of the hills of Mexico and sink down over me in gentle folds. Then I saw a man slip from the shadowed shrubbery and move cautiously up the terrace, a pale ghost dressed in the white cotton of a pan worker. As I came quietly to my feet, a girl ran from inside somewhere, clung to him and stopped him. They argued fiercely for a moment and guarded Spanish. Then the man turned and saw me and vanished into the darkness of the hotel gardens. The girl faced me for an instant, with eyes like frightened doves. Then she too turned and fled. But I'd recognize her. She was the hotel maid who'd brought ice to my room when I first arrived. So it was a lover's meeting, most likely. And yet, the man, before she stopped him, had been heading across the terrace toward Charlie Burton's room. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow... The great man condescends and shivers a little, too. And a girl's hidden hate is blacker than the sea-wet rock she vents it on. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Les Crutchfield. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Thank <laughs> you.